what's up, it's Dan or DMAS96 here, and welcome back to our F1 Manager Crew Mode with Stuart GP. And what can I say? The last race we did at Monza, absolute craziness. Third and second result for the drivers. Rubens Barrichello finished second, Johnny Herbert came third. Best result of the season for Rubens Barrichello, which moves him into eighth in the championship. Johnny Herbert still holds fourth position and is looking good to um, actually take it if he just keeps beating the Jordan drivers. And the Constructors Championship, we've now moved ahead of Jordan. Only by three points, though. It's going to be a close one. This battle for third seems to be more exciting than the battle for the leading Constructors Championship because McLaren can secure that title this weekend simply if they just have a good result over Ferrari. And obviously, uh, Mika Hakkinen still leads the Drivers' Championship, but David Coulthard is still mathematically in this. I don't think he's going to win. He needs uh, Hakkinen and Schumacher to retire in every single race remaining. But it could be interesting to watch, actually, if Coulthard can actually pull this off. It probably won't happen, but he still has a mathematical chance. And we're still leading that, and we've practically secured it, I think. I can't really see anyone else catching us up in the Team Managers' Championship. But in today's episode, we will be moving on to the European Grand Prix. A very interesting race, actually. Um, now, this game doesn't recognise the history, but this is a very important race for Stuart GP because of this clip right here. And here is Johnny Herbert in the Stuart. Johnny Herbert in the Stuart turns into corner 13 and takes the chicken flag to win. Stuart, well, our words fail me. So, in the actual 1999 European Grand Prix, Johnny Herbert took the victory for Stuart in an absolutely crazy race for the wet weather. Everyone else falling off, but wet weather doesn't happen in this game, so we'll just have to rely on everyone else falling off the track if we want any, any chance of taking a win for the remaining races of this season. But I don't know if anything can happen in this game. It's a broken game, but... Yes, yeah, European Grand Prix next, and hopefully we can have a good one, repeat the form of what we did in Italy. I doubt it though, I doubt we're going to get both cars onto the podium here, but we're going to give it a decent go. I think it's going to be an interesting race, but uh, before we actually start the first practice session, it's time to move on to the news report. So, apparently there was nothing to report in the news report, so we're going to go straight on to the practice session. And as you can see, uh, David Coulthard this time was the fastest driver in practice. I don't know if we've seen that already. Uh, Hacking in second, Michael Schumacher third. We're fourth and sixth, which isn't bad at all. Irvine down in eighth, and the Jordans in between as well. Fifth for Hill and seventh for Frenson. But apart from that, uh, and Coulthard being fastest, this was a pretty normal. Yeah, practice session really. Uh, John Lacey last out of the runners actually completed the lap of course. Arrows will not be completing any more laps this season. And yeah, it'll be interesting for qualifying if Coulthard keeps up the pace over his teammate. This could be very interesting I feel. We all know Coulthard's still very much in this championship battle. But I think it's going to be an interesting qualifying session. So let's move on to the qualifying reports. John Lacey lined up in 19th position in between the two Minardis. Jack Villeneuve once again out-qualifies Ricardo Zonta as Prost Olivier Panis will start in a solid 12. Giancarlo Fisichella lines up in 10th, one place up on teammate Verse. Ralph Schumacher was pleased with his 8th place position, out-qualifying Damon Hill in the Jordan, who was left down in 9th. It was another good session for Stewart, with Barrichello managing 5th and Johnny Herbert just missing out on the top 6. The fans of Michael Schumacher were quite surprised to see teammate Eddie Irvine outpace the German at his second home race. Once again, it was Mika Hakkinen on pole position. Could he finally overcome his bad luck and extend the nine point lead he has over his rival? All right, so we're gonna be a bit interesting here for the strategy for the European Grand Prix. We're gonna put Johnny on a two stop and then we're gonna risk putting Rubens on a three stop. I don't know if that's gonna work. It might completely fuck up, but I don't know, it's worth doing, don't know why, but we're going to give it a go and see what happens. As for the qualifying session, Rubens did well to qualify 5th with Johnny Herbert 7th and it's another McLaren front row, both Hacken and Kilfard setting the fast lap times. Irvine Schumacher then behind. And then it's a pretty normal session really, but Stewart's and Jordan's mixed up together. And then uh, Ralph Schumacher in 8th. And then Luca Bidot at the back. Nothing much to be said really. It should be an interesting race. And now let's get straight into it. 
for Rubens Barrichello for the start of the European Grand Prix. And it's lights out and away we go here for Nürburgring and both my fans have got off to a very, very good start. Barrichello holding off the defence from Matt Jordan. I don't know which one's taking the lead. I'm going to have a quick look now. But Barrichello has actually been overtaken by the Jordan of, um, I think that is... Uh, Heinz Alfrenson has been overtaken by Heinz Alfrenson from the start. It's not a brilliant start there for Rubens, but in fact it was cool part. But actually Lee's teammate Hacken, you can see the, uh, the Stewart there, and as Barricade desperately trying to retake the position off uh, Heinz Alfrenson, and he hasn't done it, but is being now caught under pressure from the uh, Williams driver. We just saw Johnny Herbert get overtaken by Damon Hill, so he's having an absolute nightmare of a first lap. Johnny Herbert in 8th position, Barrichello holding on to 6th for the time being. But David Coulthard leads after the first lap here of the Nürburgring. Oh fuck, Rubens! Barrichello's out in the race then. It's all chances over a decent result. Hacken's retaking the lead. Just gotta hope Johnny doesn't retire as well. He's pulling away from Hill and is keeping close to Frentzen. If he can get ahead of him, that would be nice. We can get some decent points there. Back at the front of this Grand Prix on lap 8, it's Mick Hackinen that leads. He has passed David Coulthard and is, is just like one of the Saubers now and is pulling away from his teammate, I do believe. But we, we all know what could happen. Hackinen has struggled with retirements in the past few races. We could see a Hackinen bottle here at the Nürburgring. As for Johnny Herbert, who's still in this race, he is running in fifth position. He just passed Heinz Frensen and is now slowly starting to build a gap from the German. Hopefully he can stay in this position. His points is what we need to stay ahead of Jordan. Okay, that's actually helped there. Heinz Alfrenson's just retired from the Grand Prix on that 15 here at the Nürburgring. We are going to move down to hold position as we're not going to catch it with Irvine. We've got a big gap to Damon Hill. We need to save the car. We don't want to uh, retire already. Johnny Herbert pitting later than everyone else, though. That is a risk. And I'm a little bit worried about that. So Johnny Herbert's into the pits for slap. Let's hope it's a good one here. He is doing a different strategy compared to everyone else who are doing three stops. He's doing a two stop. 11.8 seconds. He is going to rejoin in fifth position ahead of Damon Hill. Nothing much happened out in front. It's not really seeming like it's going to be an eventful race. Hackinen is leading and is pulling away from the rest of the field. And it looks like he's going to extend that lead in the championship, which is what he needs if he wants to win this. He is nine points ahead of Schumacher. And has a good chance to secure the title in Malaysia with a good result here. So Johnny Herbert is due into the pits this lap. It's not really going to be much difference. He's going to stay where he is, I believe. Oh no, he's behind Damon Hill. He's past Damon Hill and I think Coulthard's just retired. He has done. Engine's gone for Coulthard. We're up into fourth here. Oh, Irvine's gone as well. We're up into ninth. Could the luck be on our side? We're going to get another podium finish here. What result this could be? Two championship contenders still running in first and second. And as soon as I say that, Hackinen's out, is it? Yes, he is! Hackinen's out of the race! And Michael Schumacher's in the lead! And that is going to mean that Schumacher's going to take the lead of the championship if he stays on the track. Unfortunately, I have missed it. But Schumacher has crossed the line in first position. And he has taken the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Brilliant result from him this weekend. Now that's going to put him in prime contention here to take the 1999 Drivers' Championship. We could actually see him champion in Malaysia with another good result. But somehow, we have managed to make this two-stop strategy work. And Johnny Herbert is going into the chicane for the final time. He only has one more corner to go. And it looks like it's going to be second place for Johnny Herbert and his and the team's third consecutive podium finish. Johnny Herbert's done an amazing job this season. And there, it, there he is, another podium finish for the Stewart team. And surely we must be Jordan in this championship. And Luca Badeau is comparing six, seven laps off the pace, I know, but still, a point for Minardi, and that's their first of the season, I do believe. A brilliant result for the uh, Minardi team. And that means that they have successfully beaten Arrows in the championship. They're not going to score any points. What another crazy race that is. Six drivers finishing again. The second consecutive race. Michael Schumacher wins. And has taken the lead in the drivers' championship. Johnny Herbert second. Damon Hill third. Followed by Fizzy Keller, Zanardi and Badawa. 
What a crazy race it's been, and another huge amount of retirements. Let's take a look at the driver's standings. So, with two rounds to go, it's now between two men to win the driver's championship, and that's Michael Schumacher and Mika Hacken. David Coulthard's mathematical chances are over, unfortunately. He can no longer win this championship. But the big thing is, Schumacher has now retaken the lead of the driver's championship. He hasn't led since the Brazilian Grand Prix way back at the start of the season and is now sitting one point ahead of Mika Hakkinen thanks to his long run of DNFs. Could Schumacher take the title for Ferrari in Malaysia? It is possible if, Hak if Hakkinen's form continues, but it looks like it's going to be in Japan is where Schumacher's going to take the championship. But meanwhile, uh, we are fourth in the championship with Johnny Herbert and we look certain to secure that position uh, being 8 points ahead of Damon Hill, a good result in Malaysia for Johnny. We'll see him clinch up 4th place in the championship. And we still could get 3rd, with David Coulthard only being 11 points uh, ahead of us. Some good results for Johnny, 2 podium finishes maybe. We'll see him in that 3rd place in the championship. 4th drivers yet to score, Pedro Diniz, Mark Janay and 2 Arrows drivers, but it looks like it's not going to be any points for those two. As we move on to the Constructors Championship, and we stay in 3rd position quite a way ahead of Jordan now and are we going to actually secure a third place in the championship? It would be amazing if we do. We're only a few points ahead of him. It could well be possible. But McLaren are still leading the Constructors' Championship and believe it or not they can still be beaten by Ferrari. But Ferrari really need to get 1-2 finishes in the final two races if they want to beat them. And in the manager standings we increase our lead over Ron Dennis yet again, who, despite not even finishing, is somehow still in second. John Sock closing in in third, and we have Alan Prost in fourth. And apart from that, everything else really staying very much the same. I think Tom Walkinshaw has dropped a little bit, though, because he hasn't really competed in the previous few rounds. So, another crazy race here at the European Grand Prix. Hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. We've only got two rounds to go now. And next up is a brand new circuit, actually, for the 1999 season. That is the Malaysian Grand Prix. Of course, it's not brand new now, but it is here for this game. The penultimate round of the season. It's going to be an interesting one, I think. Can Michael Schumacher clinch the title with Hakkinen's recent run of bad luck? Will McLaren secure the Constructors' Championship? And more importantly, can we get a good result as well? It's going to be exciting. I can't wait. Hope you guys are excited for it as well. But I hope you guys have also enjoyed today's episode. If you have, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. So it's time, guys, for me, DMAT96. I'll catch you guys later. You put a part inside the mind, and I know there's something between us with nothing inside. Nothing.